I think Secretary of State Rice must be thinking as she's heading out this time, how, how did it all go so badly wrong so quickly? I mean, it's a little more than uh, three months since Annapolis, all the parties to the Arab-Israeli conflict were there assembled, talking about making peace. And uh, now we're back to a warlike situation uh, in Gaza. And um, she's obviously got to get that situation under control. The negotiations have now been suspended. And so uh, before anything can go forward, um, there's got to be some way of dealing with the challenge of Gaza. But to deal with the challenge of Gaza is immensely difficult now. Um, because with Hamas having taken control there by military force, there's uh, no sensible uh, way out that uh, can either include Hamas, since Hamas is not interested in negotiating peace with Israel, since Hamas is engaged in a conflict not just with Israel but with the Palestinian Authority that Israel wants to negotiate peace with. If, if Hamas is somehow brought into the process, you lose Israel and the rest of the Palestinian Authority, so you don't even have a negotiation there. But if Hamas is excluded, it obviously has shown that it has the ability to blow up the process. So it's a, it's a real conundrum now, which I don't think needed to develop in this way if the Secretary of State and President Bush had taken seriously their own objective of trying to achieve an agreement by the end of the year. And, you know, they've just been absent from the arena since Annapolis, for all intents and purposes, except for the President's magical mystery tour to the Middle East, which really did nothing to advance the process. And so now, as a result of, of this uh, American lack of engagement over the last three months, we've got a far more difficult situation that she's going to have to deal with. The Iranians are engaged in a bid for dominance in the region. They see the United States stumbling. They see the opportunity to spread their influence to Iraq, which they've done quite effectively. In Lebanon, where through Hezbollah, they're helping to paralyze the Lebanese government and rebuilding Hezbollah's capability of, of uh, confronting Israel. Uh, and in Gaza, where they are the primary supporters of Hamas. Uh, and so uh, in that sense, they're, they are there using their influence in a very negative way to hold up the United States and, and its friends and allies. In a more fundamental way, they gain from the inability of the United States to show that it, its way works. You see, the message from Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president, is violence, terrorism, defiance of the international community and the UN Security Council works. This is the way that we can achieve not only uh, our ambitions as Iranians, but we can achieve dignity for Arabs and, and liberate Palestine. And that's the message that comes from Iran, from Hamas, from Hezbollah. And the United States, through the Annapolis process, was engaged in an effort to show that that was wrong, that through negotiations and reconciliation and peace, Arabs, Palestinians can achieve their rights much more effectively. And that's what's at stake here in a much broader sense. And unless the Secretary of State is able to get this process uh, out of the rut that it's now been driven into by Hamas's actions, we're going to find a situation in which those who are identified with the process, whether it's Palestinian uh, President uh, Mahmoud Abbas or Prime Minister Salam Fayyad or the Saudis or the Egyptians or the Israelis, all of them are going to be discredited and the Iranians will gain from that. I think that if people were rational when George Bush turns up for Israel's uh, 60th uh, anniversary celebrations, that people uh, in the Arab world will look at Israel and look at the Palestinians and say, you know, it hasn't worked out so well and maybe there's something we need to do better because the Israelis, I mean, they've got a problem, but it's not holding them back um, and it is destroying Palestinian society and creating more and more misery for the Palestinians. So there, there tends to be a view 
on the Palestinian side and the Arab world more generally. The time is on our side. I think the message of, of the 60th anniversary is time is not on the side of the Palestinians. Time is not on the side of peace. And we really need all who want to see a reconciliation, who want to see a Palestinian independent state living side by side in peace with Israel to d redouble their efforts to try to achieve this before it's too late.